I don't have a question. <laughs> I just have feelings. And that's why I'm here. Well, feelings are what we want you to reach for. Feelings are indicators. Thoughts are the true creators. And feelings indicate the direction of creation. So both are a good thing. But satisfied is a feeling. And that's what we want you to isolate. And so if you've got your attention on how you feel, then you've got your attention on your own creative control. And that's a wonderful thing. But we know that you do have thoughts. You might not have questions right now, but we know you do have thoughts and your feelings are in response to those thoughts. Your feelings are the indicator of the difference. If there is some, and there usually is some, the difference between your inner beings thought about this and that and your thought about this and that. So if your feelings mostly feel good, satisfied and better, then you and your inner being are often in sync. But if your feelings are dissatisfied and worse, then your inner being's thoughts and your thoughts are out of sync. And you're the only one that can do something about that because your inner being is not going to join you in unsatisfying thoughts. How did you come to the place of deciding to pay attention to the way you feel? Lots of lessons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you touch a hot stove, you don't do that again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like when you hit yourself over the head with a hammer and when you stop, it feels relief. <laughs> well, that's what moving up the emotional scale does, but we want you to move all the way past relief and into satisfaction and non-resistance. So do you have something that you want to discuss with us? Yes. That's why I'm here. I just don't know exactly what it is. At certain times, I know very clearly. Sometimes when problems are brewing, you have greater clarity about what you want to talk about. And then once you get soothed and in alignment, then the vividness of the question or the vividness of the problem sort of becomes dimmer. But still. I have a question or a statement. I'm unable to consistently move past the same things that are the lessons that heal, that help me heal and see and know at times are the ones that also bring me down into lower vibration. It's logical, isn't it, when you think about it? Because mm -hmm. as a problem is becoming, the solution is becoming too. So it's just different ends of the same vibrational stick. Mm -hmm. When you really want something, it's logical that you could be extra sensitive about that. Someone called you on the telephone and said, hello, you don't know me. I'm just calling to tell you I'm never going to call you again. You would say, thanks for letting me know, but you wouldn't feel any disappointment. On the other hand, if someone you really care about cuts you off like that, you would likely feel some strong negative emotion because something that you want looks like it's not happening. And so it's good to figure out where you are on different subjects, isn't it? It is, but it's not always easy. Sometimes no, it isn't. it's very easy. Well, it depends on how fast you catch it. If you let the momentum of it take you into that place, law of attraction is relentless. It never shuts down. So as long as you are conscious, which means awake and broadcasting, which means thinking, which is all the time, even though you might be paying more attention to the way you feel, if you weren't thinking, you wouldn't be feeling. If you weren't thinking, there wouldn't be any relationship or comparison between what you're thinking and what your inner being is thinking. And so since law of attraction is relentless, always responding to you, always responding to you in your physical form and always responding to you in your non-physical form, then emotions or feelings are a big part of your life because that vibrational sameness or diversity allowance or resistance is always evident to a sensitive person. So when you're really sensitive and you are, sometimes you try to shut down desires in order to give yourself a break, but you can't really shut them down. Once you've launched them and once your inner being's gotten hold of them and once law of attraction is responding to them, you really got to figure out ways to go with the flow of them. Mm, yeah. Um, I do a lot of creating and destroying 
all in the same everybody does but process. you know what here's the thing you can't destroy you can only pinch off from what you've created because once you've created it it is and it will be there vibrationally ready for your realization of it for longer than you will live once life has caused you to ask for it it is a done deal and your inner being and source are infinitely patient don't even have to be patient because knowing that any time that you release resistance by allowing a little satisfaction that then you will move closer into the allowing yourself to receive it a friend of Esther's yesterday reminded her of a story that we've been telling for a while and it was a trip that several of them took a cruise to the Panama Canal and there was quite a water level difference between one body of water that they sailed in on and the body of water that they were going to sail out on and so the big massive ship moved into these locks where it moved slowly in it was so impressive so close that Esther felt from her cabin she could almost touch the side of the lock and then they were there for several minutes as water was introduced into the compartment that the ship was sitting in and raised them a little bit until they were able to flow into the next lock and then the water was added to that until it raised the ship a little more until they were able to flow into the next lock and in time they were able to just flow into the body of water that they needed to be in and it saved them so many miles of sailing everyone knows about the locking system and it's something that you've seen or read about or experienced but we want you to feel it in relationship to your own vibrational characteristic or beingness in a moment and we want you to realize that as life causes you to continue to ask for more and more that your inner being focuses with a very high vibration on what you're asking for and so law of attraction is responding to your inner beings request on your behalf for what you want it's all done it's all queued up for you to begin realizing it into your experience with your own powerful mind and feelings but with your own powerful mind so here's this high 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 vibration meaning less 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 no resistance within it because when resistance is removed from vibration vibration rises and so here's this high vibration with all the things that you've asked for and more than you can even comprehend because you've asked individually and the cooperative components have been gathered into a creation that is more than you even knew you were asking for so there it is ready for you in this high vibration but maybe you have sailed in on a lower vibration and you know you want it but you can't really feel it you haven't practiced satisfaction and so you haven't let yourself go like the cork would bob up but as you do find more reasons to feel satisfied and more reasons to feel satisfied and more reasons to feel satisfied before you know it you're hanging around up there in that equivalent sea level so to speak and now the gate opens and what's in your vortex just flows like the ship into the experience that is you that's really the way that it works and the best part of it is that as it flows into your experience it occurs to you you receive impulses that you couldn't receive if you're here and your ships here or the water level is here and you're here you've got to allow your vibration to rise to the equivalency of what you've asked for and all of us who have been tending it you have to be the vibrational frequency that you're asking for and you have to pay a big price for it you have to be happy you have to be satisfied but if you are aware of your feelings and you care about them so you are reaching for them when it's easy and you've mastered that feeling good so that you're mostly hanging out there then you just have a steady flowing of what you've asked for into your experience but it's not like somebody else does it and just dumps it on you it's that you've done it and it's been revealed to you and now you are in the vibrational vicinity so you are receiving the revelation 
you are realizing it. So an impulse comes to you. You just get this frisky feeling of being somewhere or going somewhere, a feeling of turning left rather than right, a feeling of getting in your car and going, a feeling of turning on the television at a particularly timely time or all kinds of things that you can't really foresee. Esther doesn't hear us say, Esther, if you'll do such and such and be such and such, then this and this and this will happen. It's not like that. It's like she, in her satisfaction, feels an impulse to go somewhere or to be somewhere or to do something. And then she rendezvous with something that is mega satisfying, something that is satisfaction on steroids, something that is evidence to her that she received and followed and is in the right place at the right time. And when your days are made up of experiences like that, where you just get to rendezvous with one satisfying thing after another, then you start to sort of get the hang of this, that you are well cared for and that you are loved and that you are being guided and that you are blessed and worthy of your guidance. And then this sort of ease of feeling good, life unfolds for you the way your step one moments have asked it to be. You create your own reality in step one. You allow your own reality in step three. And the satisfaction mode is step three. That's the receiving mode, you see. But so many people created in step one and then hang out in step one and then are defensive in step one and are demanding in step one and are irritated in step one and so they keep putting more over there and the energies keep moving more and the stakes keep getting higher and the tug of war keeps becoming more intense until finally something gets through to you maybe somebody influences you maybe you just get tired of the struggle doesn't matter but when you finally let go of the struggle and you just allow yourself to let in what you deserve and what you've asked for, then that's when you feel the certainty of your true worthiness and the certainty of your true power to create. God will open those locks. Well, the good news is everything in the universe is on your side about it. And when we tell you that your vortex has gathered all of the cooperative components and that you are the only potential uncooperative component and that when you feel satisfied you are a cooperative component then you begin putting your emphasis in the place that works and the thing that is so confounding to so many of you this sounds too simple to be real you got to show it to yourself you got to show yourself do you think you know what satisfaction feels like Esther's been trying to identify, oh, it's going into a restaurant with friends or even on my own, but mostly with friends and settling in to the lovely seat that has been pre-decided for us, usually by us. How often do you return to a restaurant you've been to before and they take you to the same seat? And it's because that's the way you see that restaurant and so that's the vibration that you offer and so that's what it's logical for them to put you in. When that happens, that's why. So you settle in. And you just feel that feeling of anticipation. Oh, you can smell the good food and you can see the sweet friends and you can feel the well-being of the ambiance and you're appreciating the loveliness of the people who are there to help you to cook your food and bring your food and play with you in whatever way they do. Esther feels so satisfied when she slips into that moment. And it doesn't last a long time. That feeling of satisfaction moves often into great fun or great interest in the conversation or appreciation for all kinds of things. But that feeling of satisfaction, that simple, free feeling of right place, right time, of all is well in my world, of well-being, that's what we're asking you to reach for. Sitting in her car at the beach in San Diego, just sitting there, watching the waves who will keep coming to her, comprehending the perfection of the planet. There are so many reasons to feel satisfied, but you have to sort of tune yourself away from your dissatisfaction because as humans, you've been trained by others who need and want things from you to bite the bullet and buck up and persevere and do what they need you to do. And so, You've given a lot of your capacity to even relate to satisfaction up for things that aren't that satisfying, like perseverance, <laughs> struggle, sacrifice, all that stuff that they write on the good side of the chart that doesn't feel good to you. 
So when you tell us that you're about feelings, we say, you've got it figured out.